Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we've been discussing the sacraments of the Catholic Church, and so far we've talked about reconciliation, baptism, the Eucharist, and confirmation. Now the sacrament of matrimony, also known as marriage. Specifically, how can you know whether a marriage is invalid? In order to make a valid marriage, at least one of the persons has to be a baptized Catholic. They have to be married by a priest, they obviously need to be a man and a woman, and apart from that, the marriage is valid unless there are any impediments to them getting married. What are the impediments to marriage? Glad you asked. Impediment 1. Age. Boys can't marry until they reach the age of 16, and girls until they reach the age of 14. Also, no one should marry until they reach an age where it's legal to do so in their country. Impediment 2. Health. If one of the persons is definitely known to be permanently impotent, they can't validly marry. Impediment 3. Relationship. If any person is related to any other person in the third degree or less, there can be no marriage between them. This means any direct ancestors or descendants, aunts, uncles, cousins, second cousins, and third cousins, all of those are too closely related for a valid marriage. You also can't marry anyone who served as a baptismal sponsor for you, or who you served as a baptismal sponsor for, or anyone who you adopted legally, or who legally adopted you. Also, you can't marry anyone who's married already. Impediment 4. Intention. Marriages between an abductor and an abducted person are invalid, as are marriages forced on another person against their will. Marriages in which one or both parties has no intention of marrying are invalid. Impediment 5. Religion. Generally, Catholics are forbidden from marrying non-Catholics. Those are called mixed marriages. Usually, it's been found that those types of marriages lead to a loss of faith, religious indifference, and neglect in the religious education of the children, if not active conflict between the spouses on the subjects of religion and truth. However, marriages like that can be permitted by dispensation for urgent reasons, such as to prevent a greater evil. Even this is only allowed under certain conditions, though. Condition 1. The Catholic has to be allowed to exercise their religion freely. Condition 2. The Catholic has to try to lead the non-Catholic to the Catholic faith through proper teaching and setting a good example. Condition 3. The children born of the marriage have to be brought up in the Catholic religion. Also, the marriage ceremony mustn't be repeated by a heretical minister. Without these promises, the Church won't consent to a mixed marriage, and if the Church doesn't consent, the marriage isn't lawful. Note that the Church doesn't want people to become Catholics just for the sake of marrying other Catholics, because that doesn't represent a real inner conversion of any sort. These rules against mixed marriages are mainly for the reasons I listed a minute ago. Catholics who marry or repeat their marriage with a Protestant minister are excommunicated, which means they can't be admitted to the sacraments until the excommunication is lifted by the permission of a bishop. This is because the Catholic is treating someone as a priest who doesn't have any sacred power or authority. Also, marriages are invalid when one or more of the people being married hasn't been baptized. Other Impediments if you've been married before and aren't entirely sure that your previous spouse is dead, you can't marry again. The only exceptions would be if the marriage was annulled. A marriage is annulled, for example, if the person marrying is a consecrated priest or religious brother or sister in an order, or if they've taken vows to not marry. Those who use crimes to work against a legitimate marriage that one or both of them is in can't marry each other. This would be things like committing adultery while married, or murdering one's spouse to get out of a marriage and marry one's mistress. That's not valid. If anybody knows of any of these impediments that would make an upcoming marriage invalid, especially one of the two people being married, they should let the priest know about this in private, or else it's a sin. Next time, maybe you can get married validly, but that doesn't make it wise. When is it prudent to get married? When isn't it prudent? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.